Hello, Russell again. So I just want to apologize first up for how long it's taken to post an update about the space shuttle project, mostly because it's summer in Australia and it is stinking hot. Uh, it's actually 34 degrees still in the garage at the moment and it's a relatively cool day. So I just haven't felt particularly compelled to get in here and build a space shuttle. So that happened. Anyway, time for an update on where the shuttle is. All right, so here it is. Let's see what we've done. So on the back, we have our 3D printed engine bells and our little OMS thrusters. Uh, they've all been finished up with some ultra matte black and then a bit of antique bronze and silver rub and buff. So they're looking quite good, I think. some markings. Now the markings are actually laser printed and then I've separated the layers of the paper using uh, packaging tape in order to get the thinnest possible application to put onto the surface of the shuttle. I think the markings have turned out quite good. Also the little ejection warning sign there. And it's very subtle but I have applied some weathering and the weathering's all been applied using rattle cans. Some of it's been misted with a couple of different colors. So we've got sort of an off-white here and across the top of the payload bay we've got off-white and then we've got a very pale gray that's been applied in a few areas and I think that's worked out quite well. Applying that weathering, I've also had to repaint all of the hinges, which was a fun and tedious job that I probably didn't need to do. I could have avoided that, but I didn't. There are still a few other bits of weathering that I'd like to apply, but generally speaking, I think the shuttle's in a pretty good place right now. I really should put a patch of black tiles on the front of the OMS pods, but it's a slightly terrifying thing to do because it needs to be identical on both sides, and I don't think the tile patterns match. But it's also not the biggest deal if I don't do it, so it's all good. Uh, oh, there's also a little bit of weathering and variation in the vertical stabilizer. So off white and then clean white. So that's looking good. I have 3D printed the cone that goes on top of the external tank. And I thought I'd be kind of frugal with my 3D printing and print it in several parts to uh, save time. Uh, this is gonna be a bit of a puzzle. And we have an external tank. This is not the, the, the final tube. This one actually isn't long enough, but it is the same diameter, so I can confirm. This thing fits. Okay, so there's a dome, which is now filled with spray foam. It's foam in a dome. Okay, so I have cut a tube, which is going to be the external tank. Cone on top, dome on the bottom. Before I attach the ends of the tube, I am going to mark the tube up with various things that need to be identified on it so that I don't have to do that later while it's difficult to stand it up on its end. This is where we're up to on our external tank. So there's the dome being formed. We've got mounting points for the orbiter and it's looking like a thing. Okay, so the dome's cleaned up. It's gonna require a great deal of filling and sanding and generally messing around with in order for it to look presentable but we'll get there. So we now have a removable top on the external tank. I put in one band here. I'm about to put the ribbed section on here and then I'll put another band underneath. I was going to put both bands on and then put the ribbed section in but the chances of me getting both bands and the ribbed section exactly the same size is probably not going to work so I'll put the ribbed section in first and then the bottom band and then we'll have most of an external tank finished. I bought textured EVA foam because I think it's going to be perfect for the ribbed section of the external tank. Okay, so I've masked up both ends of the tube. I'm now going to hit it with some contact adhesive and then attach our foam. Yeah. 
These are massive cable ties. Okay, so the external tank is all masked up. And I've hit it with some primer so that the next layer is going to adhere properly. And the next layer is probably the last thing you would expect. It's this stuff. And uh, this is Rust-Oleum Glitter. And I am not making the most flamboyant space shuttle ever. This stuff is just really good at creating a rough texture on something before you apply more paint. And it happened to be really cheap when I bought it, so... And I also need to add in the various pipes and attachments that go on the outside of the external tank. So that's a wooden dowel for the liquid oxygen pipe that goes down the front. I picked up a bunch of these buttons dirt cheap and they're being used here for the, uh, actually for the support of the liquid oxygen pipe, which is completely wrong, but it's going to be effective. And then we've got some smaller buttons that I also found dirt cheap and I'm using those to support the other piping that goes on the front of the tank and down the front of the cone, and that's a tile spacer wedge. One of the biggest challenges with the external tank is actually the paint job, because the external tank itself is covered with a kind of foam that deteriorates over time. So when you look at reference photos of space shuttle launches, the external tank is actually a different color in just about every single photo, and there'll also be inconsistencies between the band area here and the bulk of the I have no idea where I'm pointing, the uh, the tank itself and the band or the inter-tank area. Um, sometimes the, the band will be lighter and the tank will be darker, sometimes the tank is lighter and the band's darker. It's really uh, tedious when you're trying to pick exactly what it is that you want to do. Now the good news is that I found uh, another nerd who has already done all the research in order to determine how best to paint the external tank using a variety of rattle can colours. So, I'll put a link to that document below, it's a forum post that I found and I used his technique and it works quite well. I think he, his, his technique was for much smaller models but it seems to work on a larger scale as well so that's cool. It's really difficult otherwise to get the colour of the tank right because it's not a single colour, it's actually a, a, a medley of deteriorating foam colours, it's complex. I have also 3D printed some cones, which hopefully will fit on the end of these tubes, which they do. Yay! Okay, rocket engines. So there's my tube. I have a template that I have printed out to show me where the rings go, I'm going to mark the rings and then I'm going to use another piece of tube to actually mark the rings around the tube. So here we go. Okay so there's my tube and I have a piece from the end of another piece of PVC tube, same diameter as this, 
Uh, this is the factory end, so it's cut reasonably straight, and I have a brake in it, and the idea is I can slot this piece over the outside of this tube. As it turns out, I probably shouldn't have put this pipe on yet, but it works because it fits around the cap. And then I just slide that down to the mark and draw around. Easy. Just waiting for the glue to dry on those guys so that I can attach them to the bottom of those guys. we have solid rocket boosters. And that is that. So thank you very much for watching. I know these videos have been kind of long. Um, making YouTube videos is not a new experience for me, but making YouTube videos of building projects is. So I've kind of been making this up as I go along. I hope it's worked out. I hope it's been interesting and maybe entertaining and maybe showed you some crazy ways of doing things. So I will absolutely be making more videos and more things in future, so feel free to find a subscribe button down there somewhere and click it. Anyway, thank you for watching and all that. See ya.